A pass no pass petition has more than 2,000 supporters. The petition creator tells us why USC should offer a pass no pass option this semester. Most California voters will receive their mail-in ballots this week. We'll give you tips on how to make sure your ballot is counted. A USC professor has official genius status. We'll talk with the recipient of the MacArthur Genius Grant. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. A petition for a pass no pass option this semester has over 2,000 signatures. I'm Ella Katz reporting from Los Angeles. And I'm Zoe Ginsberg also reporting from LA. Students say stress from the pandemic and wildfires is making this an especially tough semester. The petition asks USC to allow students to take any class pass no pass, including major requirements. This policy would be identical to the one adapted last semester. The creator of the petition says the mental health of students makes this option necessary. So the reason I decided to start the petition was because I've honestly been hearing from a lot of my friends that they're really stressed out. Um, we don't have a Thanksgiving break anymore. We don't have a fall break. Um, it's kind of just school, 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 and the pace is moving really fast. I had, I think, three midterms in a week, and the sky was completely orange because of the California fires. And just like waking up to like orange light filling your room and then having to go to your desk and start studying, it's kind of, it's not really conducive. The petition says, quote, The world we are living in right now is not normal, and our grading system should reflect that. We talked to a USG member and a senior at the Marshall School of Business for their reaction to the petition. So USG is very supportive of the petition and the overall um, mindset behind it. Um, this is something we've been trying to push ever since the summer. I think universities are hesitant to stick with a pass no pass option like it was last semester because the perception is that um, last semester was um, a unique circumstance given the um, unexpected consequences of the pandemic. However, the ongoing struggle of the pandemic doesn't mean that it's not still an important option to give to students. I like really, really, really hope that the administration can understand from our perspective, like how much we're going through and like that this isn't just an excuse. Schools now offering expanded pass-no-pass -no -pass options for the semester include the University of Pennsylvania and Ohio State. We reached out to USC for comment, but have not heard back yet. For USC students living abroad, the time difference can make it difficult to complete midterms. We spoke to two students in China about the challenges. I was having a physics test uh, like 4 a.m. in the morning Beijing time. In the early morning, my mind was just blank. Staying at home, I feel much more relaxed, but at the same time, less motivated. I rather to stay with the rest of my classmates because I'm the only international student in that class. International students aren't the only ones struggling with midterms right now. From the challenge of a fully remote course load to the isolation of living at home, students are dealing with a lot more stress on their plates. So to help students, USC is expanding their mental health resources to have offerings both on and off campus. In the last year, USC has hired 12 new counselors for the USC Student Health Center, and they've also hired 18 new counselors for the Psychiatry and Behavioral Health Services at the Engman Student Health Center. Out-of-state students can now access remote therapy by calling 213-740-9355, and students near campus can schedule one-on-one -on -one drop-in counseling sessions through the Let's Talk program. Vote by Mail offers a safer and more convenient alternative for people who are concerned about voting in person. We spoke with a UCLA doctor on how cautious voters should approach voting in this election. I think that for people who are worried about crowding and long lines and potentially having to wait and just be clustered together in those lines waiting to vote, I would recommend that they try and vote early um, or if you know, that's not feasible, then they probably should vote by mail. California voters can expect to receive their mail-in ballots this week now that 21 million ballots are en route. Voters have the option to mail in their ballots or take them to local drop boxes. 
we heard from the director of a UCLA voting rights project on the impact that voting by mail could have. Uh, we know from studying other states like Washington, Oregon, and Colorado, that states that have universal vote by mail uh, have higher voter turnout. And so this should increase our voter participation because we've just taken away some of those barriers. Um, and we found that expanding access to vote by mail is good, but that not all voters are familiar with expanding access to vote by mail. They have never perhaps voted by mail before. So we think it's very important to continue to educate and do voter outreach just about exactly how vote by mail works. To make sure your ballot counts, you should complete all information on the envelope, make sure your signature matches the one on file, contact county elections officials for a new ballot if needed, return the ballot on or before November 3rd. You can also get status updates at whereismyballot.sos.ca.gov. USC students can drop their ballots at the following locations, South Vermont Avenue near Ralph's, South Hoover Street near Target, Troy Hall on Royal Street, the South Vermont Avenue Post Office Lobby, USC McCarthy Way near McCarthy Quad, and the USC Hotel on South Figueroa Street. Now to Zoe on the Vice Presidential Debate. Tomorrow night, Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Kamala Harris will face off in Salt Lake City for their first and only debate. Yesterday, the Commission on Presidential Debates said plexiglass dividers will be used to limit airborne spread of the virus. While Harris agrees to use the use of dividers, Pence requests they not be placed on his side of the stage. In response to the Biden-Harris campaign's request for plexiglass, the vice president's press secretary, Katie Miller, said, quote, If Senator Harris wants to use a fortress around herself, have at it. The second presidential debate is next Thursday in Miami. Even though the president has COVID-19, he tweeted today that he's looking forward to the debate. Former First Lady Michelle Obama has made her closing remarks on behalf of Democratic nominee Joe Biden. In a 24 minute long video, Obama spoke at length about the president's response to the coronavirus pandemic and struggles faced by people of color. Our commander in chief, sadly, has been missing in action. And his willful mismanagement of the COVID crisis is just one example of his negligence. Search your hearts and your conscience, and then vote for Joe Biden like your lives depend on it. The video quickly drew high praise on social media from across the country. At Hellraisin says, quote, this is why you're my favorite first lady, nothing but compassion and empathy for everyone, thank you. At River 1056 says, quote, well worth the time to watch this from at Michelle Obama as she lays it out for us and what's at stake in this election, hashtag closing argument. At D2 Cent says, quote, Sometimes I forget these days what real leadership looks like. Thank you at Michelle Obama for your voice and continued love for a country that too often does not love us back. Hashtag woke AF. California Governor Gavin Newsom appointed Martin Jenkins to the California Supreme Court this week. At 66 years old, Jenkins is the first openly gay black male to ever sit on the state's highest court. Living a life of authenticity is the greatest gift you can give yourself. And if you do that, you too will find yourself in a position where people see you. They really see you and who you are. After playing for the NFL, Jenkins attended the University of San Francisco where he received his law degree. Jenkins is the third black man to ever serve California's highest court. We spoke to the president of USC Outlaw to see what Jenkins' appointment could mean for the LGBTQ community. It sends a very positive and uplifting member or message to members of the community within uh, California uh, that California is definitely, uh, you know, still affirming the rights of LGBTQ plus individuals. Representation certainly matters and it goes a long way in terms of giving role models for folks um, as well as just giving faith and understanding that, you know, society as a whole accepts us. While Jenkins' nomination is a symbolic victory for California, the fight for LGBTQ rights at a national level remains. California recorded its first gigafire in modern history on Monday. 
A gigafire is a term saved for a blaze that burns at least a million acres of land. The fire has burned across several counties and started after a series of lightning strikes. Evacuation orders are in place for Mendocino and Trinity counties. The August complex fire has scorched more than 1 million acres and destroyed 21 structures. Over 11,310 structures are threatened and one firefighter has been injured, but no deaths have occurred. Starting tomorrow, indoor malls in Los Angeles County are allowed to reopen after being closed for months. Rules of course apply. Indoor malls must reopen at 25% capacity and masks are required. Also, food courts and common areas are to remain empty. We urge all operators of businesses that are currently closed to implement all of the requirements in the protocols prior to reopening. And this is how we ensure compliance and avoid citations. LA County has also allowed card rooms, nail salons, and outdoor playgrounds to reopen. But the city of Los Angeles has jurisdiction over parks, meaning it's possible that the city will enforce stricter rules than the county. It's a big night for LA sports. I'm Jillian Carroll reporting from Los Angeles, home to two teams who will be playing tonight on the road to a championship title. After dropping game three to the Heat on Sunday, the Lakers will be looking to power through game four tonight. The Lakers had one of their worst playoff outings in game three. 19 turnovers going up against Miami Jimmy Butler's 40-point triple-double. Miami Heat starting center Bam Adebayo has been cleared to play in game four, but the Lakers don't seem to be panicking. Communication, strong defense, and cleaning up sloppy plays will be key for a win tonight. The LA Dodgers will be taking on the San Diego Padres tonight for game one of the National League Divisional Series. The Padres have a young team with high energy, but Dodgers right fielder Mookie Betts thinks they can clinch this series if they stick to the basics. I think we just have to be the steady selves that we, uh, that, that who we are. I mean, we can't, uh, they have a lot of energy, a lot of young guys over there. Um, and so, you know, we can't, that's tough to match. You know, we don't need to play their game, we need to play ours. It's an exciting time to have two sports series going on at once. Let's send it over to Ava Brand with some fan reactions to these LA teams. Thanks, Jillian. The NBA and MLB playoffs remain closed off to the public, but fans are still dedicated to supporting their teams. Lakers and Dodgers fans Armand Bannon and Jake McKay are optimistic and hope the city can find a way to celebrate should either team win it all. It's a really good boost just in your day uh, to have Laker basketball going, and obviously the way we're playing is just even better. But um, I'd say it's like a piece of normalcy and you know, during the pandemic. Like in a normal year, either one of those parades would have been like, you know, it attracted like tens of thousands, if not like over 100,000 people. But obviously this year, I think, uh, you know, it'll definitely be different because of the safety protocols. So hopefully they can figure out a way to do something that's socially distanced. The status of next year's attendance rules for the NBA and MLB remain up in the air. You know, hopefully dedicated fans like Bannon and McKay will be able to support their teams in person. But for now, they'll stick to social media. That's all we have for sports. Back to you, Ella and Zoe. Three scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for their work on black holes, including UCLA professor Andrea Gez. Gez is the fourth woman to ever win a Nobel Prize in Physics. Nobel Prizes will continue to be announced every day this week until next Monday. A USC professor just found out she was named a MacArthur Fellow. That's the award commonly known as the Genius Grant. Natalie Molina spoke with us about the phone call that changed her life and her hopes for the future of ethnicity studies. They gave me the news and it was almost, you know, I kind of looked around and thought, is, is this a joke? Am I being punked? <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's an award that recognizes not just the, the scholar, not just the person, but the field and the kind of conversations we're having. So it's an opportunity to amplify those conversations, to uh, maybe make connections with other people doing that kind of work. And follow your passion um, and, and work hard at it and you will be rewarded. MacArthur Fellows are offered $625,000, no strings attached. When we asked her how she's planning to spend the money, she said, quote, I'm taking it one day at a time. And finally, we'd like to wish USC a happy birthday. Today, USC turned 140 years old. Founded in 1880, USC had just 53 students in its first class.
Today, you can still visit the first ever USC building, now known as the Whitney Alumni House on campus. Zoe, I don't know about you, but one of the reasons I applied to USC in the first place is because I wanted a big grade. I wanted to meet a bunch of different people, and I can't imagine being in a grade of 53 people. I'm shocked. I honestly, was the campus smaller? Was there like two, was it just the two built? I, I'm not really understanding why there was only 53 people. This school was is pretty young compared to most universities, so you would think they would have, you know, admitted a bigger class, but yeah, news to me, but happy 140 USC. News to both of us. Well, that wraps it up for us on this Tuesday night. From all of us at Annenberg TV News, have a good night.